Well, more news now, and local Conservatives have postponed a decision over the future of a parliamentary candidate in Norfolk. Party members in South West Norfolk met last night to discuss the suitability of Elizabeth Truss. It follows reports of a past affair with a married MP. Though the Tory leader, David Cameron, has given his backing, last night an executive committee decided her fate should be decided by all members. At the weekend, she was chosen to fight the seat vacated by Christopher Fraser. Police in Ipswich are investigating an allegation of rape at a play area off Rendlesham Road. An 18-year-old woman says that she was attacked at 20 past nine last night. The area has been cordoned off and police would like to hear from anyone with information. Well, football and South End fans have woken up today to the realisation that their club has a week to pay the taxman or face a 10-point deduction and a relegation battle. Yes, the club owes almost £700,000 and looks likely to enter administration. Lorna Ramsey has been catching up with some rather gloomy Shrimpers supporters. Nick Hull. There's a big boost for Southend United, the club's main sponsor. Is There's one story dominating the headlines in Southend today. And for fans, it makes for worrying listening. The Shrimpers face being placed into administration over an unpaid tax bill of £690,000. Fans fear it could mean an automatic 10-point deduction, plunging the club to the bottom of League One. I am quite worried actually as a fan, yeah, uh, they deserve to be down there, they're playing well. I hope there's a Saudi prince out there maybe going to buy us, but yeah, it's not looking good. Southend United were due to be at the High Court in London today, but the hearing's been put back a week to give the chairman, Ron Martin, one last chance to find the cash. He said in a statement, every supporter cares about the club's future and I care at least the same. Mine and my family's life has been entwined with the club, often taking up every wakeful hour. And I have been doing my best to make sure that Her Majesty's revenue and customs do not rip this from us. Doubt has also been cast over the Blues' plans for a new stadium at Fawcett's Farm. Southend currently lie 13th in the League One table, with 17 points from their first 14 games. Entering administration usually means a 10-point deduction under league rules, which would leave them bottom of the table fighting relegation. Southend United Supporters Trust says it's doing everything it can to help the club with its financial difficulties. They're even doing a coin collection here at Roots Hall on Friday when Southend take on Gillingham. I know it's a cliche, but every single penny does count, so that's why coin collections, bucket collections at games are really important for us. Southend United is in for a rough ride over the next week as the club tries to find the money it needs to save it from administration. Lorna Ramsey, Anglia News, Southend. The West Chelmsford MP Simon Burns has branded a joke a judge's decision not to jail a prolific 18-year-old thief. Bradley Wernham yesterday admitted 20 burglaries and asked for more than 600 offences to be taken into account. But Judge Christopher Ball spared him from prison, saying he turned over a new leaf. He's now been given a rent-free home. It's been confirmed that the Norfolk Police Chief, Ian McPherson, is quitting the force to take up a post with the Met. He's been in his current role for almost three years and is moving to London to become the Assistant Commissioner for Territorial Policing. Well, all this week at Anglia, we're celebrating our 50th birthday. But tonight, we can bring you two people who have been doing something they love for even longer. Yes, Roy Baxter and Alan Burley, who's from Manning Tree, have been with the Salvation Army Band for more than 50 years. But now they've played their last notes. Here's Tom Barton. <laughs> For more than a century between them, Roy Baxter and Alan Burley have been mainstays of the Manningtree Salvation Army Band. But for some time, they've been the cause only two bandsmen and have now decided it's time to hang up their instruments. Well, I've retired for the simple reason that the, um, I'm getting rather too old anyway. At 83, I mean, it's, <laughs> it becomes a bit hard. So I decided that the lesser of two evils was to retire rather than make too much of a mess of things. Roy started playing when he was 12, Alan when he was 14. 
They've seen the world change in the time they've been making music at Salvation Army services, but say their commitment through the decades has been worthwhile. I feel very sad, and yet, you know, we've had so many blessings out of the band. Um, you know, you have to face fact that things are not like they used to be. Uh, you can't seem to get young people involved. But I myself have loved every minute of it. I really have. So with Roy and Alan's retirement, the Manning Tree Salvation Army is without a band. The pair say they will carry on going to services and hope that a younger generation can be found to carry on the musical tradition. Tom Barton, Anglia News, Manning Tree. Congratulations to them and congratulations to our non-league team for making it through to the first round proper of the FA Cup. It's lowest off town who beat Gloucester 4-2 and now they face Wrexham. Now, a teenage girl from Cambridge has been left devastated after a group of youths killed her Jack Russell puppy by stamping on its head. In what police are calling a callous and cowardly attack, the 10-week-old puppy was attacked by a boy when her owner, April Alderton, was walking through Priory Park in St Neots. The puppy died from a fractured skull while the youths ran off. Martin Stew has our report. Back retracing their steps at Priory Park in St Neots, it's been an emotional two days for April Alderton and her friend Jake. It was here on Monday in broad daylight that April's new 10-week-old puppy, Sandy, was callously killed. April was standing here tucking her trousers into her boots when she saw Sandy make her way over in the distance to where three boys in hooded tops were standing. As April approached, she claims one of the three lifted his foot and stamped on Sandy's head. April and friend Jake picked up Sandy and ran for help. But by the time Mum Loretta arrived, it was too late. We could st still feel the warmth in her body, and um, but blood was starting to come from her mouth. And we weren't sure if, if she had actually passed away, even though my daughter, you know, she said she was breathing and everything, but the blood was coming out of her mouth and she was trying to get her to stay alive. As soon as we got to the park area, we took her straight away and rushed her straight to the Ouse Valley um, vets and um, they gave her a check over and everything and said that they were very sorry but whoever done it had crushed her skull and with the force of crushing her skull had broken her neck and that um, she, you know, she had passed away and there was nothing they could do. 15 year old April suffers from acute ADHD and has the mental age of a child nearly half her age. She was given Sandy last month as an emotional companion. Well, I was devastated. Um, I just seeing her cr crushed by that boy's foot, um, it just shocked me. Uh, it had a good four weeks with us, but it still it's not, it was, didn't have a life, really. The police have launched a full investigation. It totally appalled by it. It's a horrific incident. We have done local inquiries, we've spoke to witnesses in the area and house to house and we are doing a full investigation into the matter. Now Sandy's got a new puppy. Seven week year old Poppy is a Jack Cross Yorkshire Terrier and is Sandy's cousin. Poppy's given April a new companion but she'll never replace Sandy and will never wipe April's memory of that traumatic attack on Monday afternoon. Martin Stew, Anglia News, St Neots.